Yeah, it feels good to be still just for a moment now and allow our thoughts to just get still and and just let go. Let our thoughts go for a moment. Just relax. Nothing matters. Nothing matters. At least right now, we can allow that idea into our mind. Thank you for allowing that stillness. This is so helpful to allow ourselves to take, take a moment to just get still. So we can use this um, last 40 minutes to, um, yeah, to answer any questions that might have come up. And, um, yeah, this song that I played is just such an expression <laughs> of joy and um, it's a friend of ours that made this song. And it says in there, you don't have to seek for love. Because love is seeking you. So love is already there. Love is. And but what we do have to seek for is the blocks to love. And the human condition is such that it puts up blocks to love all the time. That's what the timeline is. So our task is to learn to see them, to see the blocks to love. And they are always there to see. And when we see them, we can really see them. And when we really see them, they go away. And we do experience the present moment. And I love the, the chapter in the course that's called Practicing the Holy Instant. And it's about this, practicing the Holy Instant. It's about seeing the blocks to love, to let them go. So in combination, in combination with all this um, exposing and expressing communication that we have been talking about, the silence and uh, meditation and going within is it's a very powerful pathway. I'm using a course in miracles and yeah, combining the relationships with the silence is a very, very powerful mix 
in awakening, in awakening past. So does anyone have any any questions <coughs> or anything you would like to express maybe or share? Read the first little bit from the chapter, and then I'll read uh, a couple paragraphs down. Because this uh, chapter does follow the special relationship chapter. And it starts off with special relationships always entail <coughs> compromise and sacrifice. The compromise comes in because of the fear of rocking the boat. There is belief in consequences. Consequence. So people pleasing becomes the general mode of operation. But when that happens, denial and repression build when you do not speak what is on your heart for fear of other people's reactions. <coughs> so if you only live to get other people to agree with you or approve of you, you are denying what you truly feel in any given situation. There's a little metaphysics in this section, but then it goes right down into the practicality, so see if you can follow, follow it a little bit. It says, in the deceived state, deceived separate state, the mind is highly uncertain. Because we are ident identified with a distinct and separate, as a distinct and separate person, our true strength is obscured and is something that the mind is out of touch with. Therefore, the attempt to look to people for approval or behaving in certain ways to make it smooth for others becomes a way to feel accepted, liked, and approved of. We feel okay only if we are okay to others and their perception, if they don't get mad at us. People-pleasing is a bargain with reality. It is ego looking for love, recognition, and respect from others to consolidate the belief in a small <coughs> self. It sort of goes with that expression, you know, you stay small because if you were so bright, you wouldn't want anyone to feel threatened by the light. Yeah, that famous quote. It can take many forms. It can be looking up to other people or covering things over. It is a way of trying to minimize fear. So that piece. But without actually letting it go. And that's the ego's motivation. It's all the control in there. It's to minimize fear but not let it go. So it's always there. While you are busy focusing on external situations, it will be difficult to find stability and peace of mind. And that can, you know, look like, you know, sometimes in the family there's a person that sort of makes everything, kind of reduces conflict in the family, you know, kind of, oh no, there's a fire, you know, and tries to put the fires out. These external situations. 
if egocentric pride and preoccupation with self is on one side of the pendulum, then people pleasing and preoccupation with others is on the other side. When we people please, we make other people so important that we lose all sense of integrity. People pleasing is a powerful defense mechanism. It keeps true joining and authentic relationships at bay. It keeps the separation in place. It's usually heavily reinforced as being something wonderful in culture, in many cultures. It is encouraged. We are raised to be people pleasers, to please our parents, our relatives, our employers, our spouses, and our children. Okay, who was first? <laughs> Yeah, and neither will satisfy. So, yeah. Yeah, so the opposite of the people, please raise the rebel. Okay. You know, yeah. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know if that's related to my question, but I just wonder about the Christian idea of service. And um, because when you were initially answering the question about people pleasing, you said, See what is in it. What is what does this have to give me? And that is such a flip of life. You know, Saint Francis' prayer, allow me to serve and to lose myself that way. And I think we can mask ourselves by being a false service. But then there is a way. I don't know. So I'm just wondering what you think about service because it's so easy to be inauthentic and serving. On the other hand, if I'm self obsessed and self absorbed, I'm miserable. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. Anybody? Yeah, when you. Um, it's always so rich when you ask the question. <laughs> There's so many aspects to it. Because what I meant with uh, to, to observe what the situation can give me. Uh, it's a beautiful way of being. It's like because when you when you when you're healed, when you see from a <coughs> healed perspective, you will feel that everything is a gift for you. Everything becomes a gift. So it's not like a gift to the ego. Like what can I get? It's not like that. Um, and yes, service, um, of course, the mask, the, the people pleaser is a servant, you know, and it's very common. It's like to become a nurse or all, all, uh, all the service <coughs> occupations in the world um, can be used. To, for people pleasing, to put false empathy or to cover up, to not look at our own pain. So, it's, yeah, it's not, um, it's not a higher place to serve unless you serve the Holy Spirit. And that needs to be uh, orchestrated by the Holy Spirit. 
it, it can't be orchestrated by us. Because there's so many ideas in the world about what service is. And it, it, it can be beautiful and of course you can you can be guided, truly guided to go into some service, to undo something in your mind, to see something in your mind. But everything we do has to be because we want to heal our own mind and not fix the world. So that's the important, very important, it's very distorted, <laughs> this thing of you know, fixing the external world and try to make it better. It's, it's huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just came to mind, I, I want to add, I saw an interview one time. It was a documentary about a lot of people that had started one of the first columns of, and then they got there and realized that they all had different ideas about what the purpose of that commune was. They just assumed they were all on the same page. But they didn't. They all had their things that they wanted and all this. And lots of things went wrong and they lost children and this and that. And at one point, they're interviewing the woman and they bring up uh, some of the, the uh, some of the bad things that happened and she just paused for a second and she said, well, you know, saving the world can be a really big ego trip. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that documentary. Bear, Blackberry Ranch or something. Maybe. I, I don't mm, remember. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, 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 yeah. That's why we focus on the one purpose, you know. There is no agenda. If there is no agenda, I mean, that's how our community came about, just through this focusing on one purpose and not, you know, mixed purposes. It was very confusing. The ego has an endless number, and every person could come up with a different different purpose. So even in principle in the community guidelines, mm -hmm. nothing will be gained. Yeah, one of the principles in our in our communities there will be no gains. <laughs> Only spiritual gains. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why it's safe. So if anybody thought it was a cult or something, then <laughs> you can, you know, drop that fear because mm -hmm. there is no agenda. There will be mm -hmm. no what? Gains. No winning for the ego. Yeah. The only, there are only spiritual rewards. Oh, I see profit. Yeah. Monetary profit. Yeah. But also self-concept. Yeah. Pride. Yeah, yeah. self-concept will go. That's why we have so few community members. <laughs> You're experiencing that the past is actually repeating, or yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Or that I'm. It's hard to perceive that innocence in that present moment because I'm laying what's happened yesterday and last week on on my perception. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then it's, the healing is not finished. Then. You know, it may take uh, much deeper communication within the relationship and uh, to hand the relationship over completely to the spirit to see what the spirit wants for this relationship. Is it still, is it still guided? Is it still helpful? Um, and if it is, then uh, 
to really really use it and really invite deeper communication. Yeah, do you have a, an insight there? Does that answer it? Yeah. Yeah, because it, it's um, it's useful to to so this is a path where we work so deeply with our own mind. You know, the the course in miracles is a self study course, and we work so deeply with it, and we want to transform our minds so that we see things so differently that. It's gone, you know. But I think that in combination with the communication within a relationship is necessary. And to really be open to any possibility, any outcome, even if it is about the relationship being maximized, finished, or, um, or if it is a deeper stage coming in where there is better communication. Yeah. When you say um, being guided by the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. how do you know that it's not your mind telling you to do that? I mean, how do you hear a voice? Or, I mean, how do you know? It's intuition. It's intuition. It's a feeling. Yeah, it can be a feeling. It can be a. Uh, like a good feeling, like a yes feeling in there. And it can be, uh, it's a practice to... It's not a thought, a thought It can be a thought, yeah, it can be a thought. But if it's a thought, how do you know that's the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. That's where you practice. You, pre you, so it's very, it's very helpful to be in a prayerful state to be in this, okay, I'm gonna ask inwardly, and I'm gonna, you know, and then if the thought is there and you don't know, try it out. You try it out, and then the more you try it out, the more you will learn what guidance really is. Yeah, yeah. it's fun to practice with it, it's much fun. <coughs> I think a clue for me is that I feel peaceful. If it's the ego, I'll get like confused or start asking questions <coughs> or trying to figure it out and I go around in a circle. Yeah, that's good. And, and the, the thing to do is to hand it over. I love the, the practice of handing it over. Like you say, if it's the ego and you churn and you, you know, try to figure it out, then it's pretty hard. But if you're in spontaneity and you follow spontaneity and inspiration, you're in like you're in the flow, you're in the guidance actually. And if you're not sure, hand it over and see if it comes back. Does it come back as an inspiration? Then that's clearly guided. If you forget about it and it comes back, it's a good way to know. It's more like I, for me, I was just, I just had to drop stuff. I just had to say no to stuff that 
um, I just couldn't play the game anymore. You know, at, um, with um, expectations from my family, for example, or expectations from society or whatever, I, I just couldn't follow that anymore. And I guess the ego throwing up stuff was more like um, the fears coming up of doing that. The fear of, the fear of not people pleasing or the fear of not um, acting as the world expects. Um, yeah, to, to, be, to face that fear, that was something I had to do. Um, and that was an ongoing process for a while. And sometimes I compromised and didn't feel good. Like in fam especially family occasions was something I compromised and didn't feel good. Yeah. So that's an area where it's very practical to you to practice guidance. To practice if you hear a yes or no and if you're not sure if you wanna, you know go somewhere or do something, just to do it with very high awareness of how you feel and just be in an inner dialogue with the spirit or with just with an inner, just observing how you're feeling, how you're acting, what you're saying, <laughs> you know, to, um, to see where different personas kicks in because you may act differently with family members than with Workmates, or you know, there may be those different expectations, and you start to learn to see where you where you do those different things, and you start to want to be more honest because you you learn that you do it for yourself. It's like there is nobody else out there. That's why also to do go this path with the Course in Miracles is is so amazing because. To really practice, there is nobody out there. You know, imagine <laughs> if you start your day tomorrow and you're gonna practice. Nobody's out there. There's only a reflection on my mind, on my thoughts, and to to dare to, to practice that. It's very encouraging to do that, and it works. Um, um, yeah. And pray first, and you know, pray as be with me, spirit, and then, yeah, just take small steps towards it. Where to listen for our answers. We learn to hear where we hear the spirit or where we hear the ego. And we have to trust that. Yeah. To to finally appear or realize we are mind. We're only mind. Yeah. So we do a lot of talking to ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, that's why Jesus said in one of the lessons, what, you know, you never ask what you use the phone for. What why do you use the telephone? The telephone. Why do you use the telephone? He's asking that in one of the lessons. <laughs> and it's a good question. 
to, to instead of just habitually make that call or whatever, just oh, what what do I really want to communicate and why? And where do I come from? You can start making self inquiry. <laughs> Maybe instead of making that call, you know. If, Yeah. Yeah, it is. Mm. Well, the only person that you're really talking to is your higher self, your, your big ass self. Yeah. Your big ass self. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh. Yeah, that's it. Because that's why also Jesus is saying that your brother is the Christ. Say that again. Your brother or sister is the Christ. It's the Christ mind. Yeah. <coughs> so that's why we need to look at our projections because if you see human beings walking around, you don't really see the Christ. You know? So so that's why it's so useful to do this self inquiry and work with our beliefs and work together in relationships where we share the purpose of healing. It saves time. What we did today is like a mini, mini retreat. And so imagine if we did this, you know, for seven days or five days or even a weekend, it's transformative. People go home and feel different and yeah, it's very, very, very helpful. And some people come and volunteer and stay longer too. Mm -hmm. Some people, a few stay for life. <laughs> So it all is about your intention. So if your intention is healing or listening to the one voice, you know, that's what you will get sooner. You will get the true voice sooner or you will, or maybe immediately, you know, because you always choose only between listening to the ego or the spirit. And that's, every moment. It's not just when you speak or listen to someone else. It's, it's in your own thoughts all the time. Yeah. Well, what, a, what a great topic to finish up the day. No, it doesn't. It, the Holy Spirit's communication in the mind is always there and all, it's ongoing, but it's out of awareness when we choose the ego. And it's almost like the Spirit is knocking on the door. It's like, I'm available. And it is ongoing. So in the, in the higher mind or in the, yeah, in your true self, it is always going on and you can tap into that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, how lovely this was. Thanks so much for coming and letting us share with you. Yeah. And we do hope to see you in the future sometime if you feel inspired to come to more events. We do have three more events in Ashland. 
So if you want a, a purposeful, meaningful Holy Spirit vacation, <laughs> come up to Ashland instead of some other, you know, vacation place maybe. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how many of you here are part of a course group or a book group? Or, yeah. So if, if any of you that are not and you would like to, you can just join with somebody that has their, their arm up <laughs> if you want to be part of one of the groups. It's one of the ways that's so helpful to work. Some more information and little business cards too with our contact information if you want to stay connected. Okay. Okay, many, many thanks to the... Uh